Okay, so now we're going to take the ideas uh, that we just talked about with our half adder and we're going to apply them to creating a full adder. And then we're going to do some, some ripple math, which will demonstrate how you, with just a couple of simple logic gates, you can do full addition, right? And this is, in fact, how your computer does full addition uh, in, its, uh, in its processor, right? Uh, okay, so we, end, we, we left off here, right, with our half adder in place, right? So we flipped that one, and that's fine. We flip that one, and that's fine. But if we flip both, uh, we end up with this carry getting triggered uh, and coming out here. So we can do basically two-bit addition this way, right? We can uh, add two single-bit numbers, right? So currently, this would be a zero. This would be a zero. Now that's a one. Now that's a one, right? And we can see one plus one comes about as two, right? So uh, let's actually take advantage of a pretty neat feature of logically, and we're going to select. Actually, hold on. Let's turn these off, just in case. We're going to select the whole thing. We're going to go up here to um, edit. No, I think it's edit. And we're going to do create integrated circuit, right? And so let's call this a half adder, right? And uh, we'll just put that here. And what you'll see is that like it basically takes all of this complicated stuff and sort of fits into this little this box here, right? And we have our two inputs, A and B, and we have our carry out and our sum, right? So let's uh, let's create it, okay? And one thing that's now nice about this is we can get rid of this. And notice that our half adder is just right up here. And it works very much the same way. I mean, it works exactly the same way. In fact, we can throw our inputs in, we connect them to our input area, right? And we have our two outputs. And we're going to throw the carry over here. We're going to throw the sum over here. And now we get the exact same behavior you would expect, right? So cool. That, that'll, that'll help keep things tidy, right? Um, <clears throat> so now we need to deal with a full adder. And the thing that we're adding in here is the potential. So imagine uh, uh, we're adding, oops, we're adding uh, a bunch of numbers together now. So let's just kick this one out to be... Um, right, we're doing that, and uh, let's do that here, right? So, and we're going to expand our um, our little borders just to keep things uh, keep things nice, and we can actually get rid of all this stuff through here, right? Uh, okay, cool. So, what would this look like, right? Um. So here, I mean, once again, so we have one plus one, right? And so we have the zero here, we carry this one over. And now we would look at these two, right? One plus zero, and that would normally be one. But we now have to deal with this carry in from this last place, right? So if we take into account this carry in, now we have one plus one plus zero, right? And this is going to be zero, but it's going to kick another carry over here. Now we have to deal with the carry in over here. One plus zero plus one. Boop. And now that's going to carry this one over here. And we forgot to fill in the zeros here. But one, and so we end up with that, right? And so what does this actually represent, right? So if we look at this, this is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this is three. And this is five, right? So we have three plus five, and we get eight, right? So we have three plus five equals eight. Does that make sense? Yeah, so the big addition here is this carry in input, right? Now, so we're gonna have this one, we're gonna call this A, once again. We're gonna have this one, we're gonna call it B. But now we need a third input, which we're gonna call carry in or CI. Let's just call it CI for short, right? Now, to simplify this, we're going to use this integrated circuit. So we're going to take advantage of that work we did earlier, okay? So we have A and B. We're going to feed that into our half adder, right? Now, we're already done with one bit, right? We're done with this sum bit. We're almost done with that some bit, right? Um, <clears throat> um, 
But now we need to think about how we deal with this with this carry bit. And so what we're going to need to do, let's actually construct the truth table for this, right? And so what we have here is we now have, right, our C hin, right? And let's uh, shorten this to C out, right? And so this bit's going to stay, this first part's going to stay exactly the same, right? Let's just say all of this is zero. We're not even taking that into account. But now what happens when we add in this information? So I'm just going to start. Fill in the stuff that was in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's correct. All right. So what do we do now with the carry in? So if it's just the carry in, right, and nothing else is here, well, the sum's going to be one and the carry out's going to be zero, right? What about when the carry in is one and A is one, right, but uh, B is zero? Well, the sum's going to be zero and the carry out's going to be one, right? Exact same thing here. The only difference now is with all of this stuff, they're both going to resolve to one, right? So if you look at this, what you can see is, so we, we took care of this bit with a half adder, right? We can actually take care of essentially this whole thing with another half adder, but we're going to have to modify it for this behavior right here. Right, so we're going to use two half adders. Okay, let me pull out. So what we need to do now is to account for uh, this second bit in the digital in digital logic, right, where we take into account this bit through here. Right. So if we look at this, uh, how is this going to work? We need. Oh, uh, so if either of these carryouts evaluates to true, right, then the carryout's going to be true. So that's easy enough. Let's just take an OR gate and we're going to connect our first carry out, and our second carry out, and we're going to pipe that to our output, right? Um, and we're basically done at this point, right? Because from here, right, uh, we have um, uh, we have connected all this stuff together. This OR gate was the last big step. This sum is going to be uh, the sum of the, of the final bit, so we're just going to connect that through here. And this should do it. So let's test that. So we have our A, our B, and our carry in. So let's flip this one. Okay, that looks good. Let's trace this through. So this comes in through here. If we remember the way that works, uh, that's going to trigger the sum. That comes into here. That triggers the sum. That looks pretty good. Okay, what about this one? Okay, the exact same path. That's good. It looks exactly the same as that first one. What about the carry in? Right? Well, that's fine because that just hits this other input and then it goes through our, our half adder logic and it pops out the sum. Okay? Let's flip both of these on. Okay? Cool. We get the right answer. This should evaluate to two. There's no carry in at this point. So both of these flip on. Our sum flips off, but the carry comes through, passes through this OR gate, and triggers this one here. Okay? Now let's get a little tricky. Right? What if we throw the carry in? Right? Well, this is also correct. We wanted that to evaluate the two. This one comes through, right? The carryout doesn't trigger, but this one comes through. This one comes through because both of these triggered. Remember, this flips this sum off because of that XOR gate, but this AND gate triggers, passes through this OR gate. There we are, right? Now, uh, let's just make sure it works with the other one. Cool, the exact same process, right? What happens if we flip all three on, right? So these come through, triggers the carry out. This one comes through. But because both of these are on, this one now flips off, right, because of that XOR gate. So this comes through and triggers the sum, and we end up with three, right? So we add all three of these things together, and we end up with the correct answer. So if that, what I encourage you to do is if that didn't make sense on the first pass, pause the video, go back, rewatch it, sort of dig through the truth tables, try to figure out, I remember that figuring out that this was just essentially a couple of half adders put together, took me a little while to sort out in my brain, right? Um, but once you've got it, it should be pretty clear. And this is pretty great, right? So, so this, okay, great, so we added in one more thing. What can we do with this? Well, let's make an integrated circuit and we'll find out, okay? So, edit, we'll create integrated circuit. 
So we need to define export name. So this is going to be, uh, let's call this CO for carry out. And let's call this sum, right? And I believe that's it. If we come in through here and we go to create integrated circuit, there we go. And we can see that we have our three inputs and our two outputs. So let's call this full adder. And let's shorten it this way. Now, one really great feature of, um, of logically is it lets you do stuff like this. So I'm actually going to redesign where the inputs and the outputs go, right? So let's actually flip this carry out over here. Let's flip the carry in over here and let's put the sum down here. And this may seem a little strange. This will make a lot more sense in a second, right? So now we have our A and B inputs here. If there's any carry in, it flows in through here. Carry out goes out that way and the sum comes down here. So we're going to create this integrated circuit, okay? And at this point now we can clear this off the board. So now we have our full adder. And here's where the magic comes in. Let's actually take another one, all right? And so what we wanna do now is we wanna do uh, a binary addition with a couple of bits, right? So um, if we look up here, right, uh, let's get rid of our carries to avoid confusion, right? Uh, and let's actually just get rid of uh, uh, these guys here, okay? We're only gonna look at these two, right? And so we, have, we can now have, uh, two bits in each number, right? So we can go up to three in each case. So we can do uh, three plus three as at, a, at a max, right? So we're hoping that we can evaluate this stuff to six at, at most, right? Cool. Uh, but we have sort of this arrangement numbers here, right? So we have our sort of singles place and our twos place. So let's actually arrange our inputs to kind of mirror that. So here's gonna be our first level, right? Imagine these are, are not light switches, but zeros and ones. I wish they actually had that. That would be a nice feature and logically. And here's going to be our second bit. Okay. So we're not going to wire this up. So this bottom one's going to go to A. Let's put this one over here. You have to kind of match that same order uh, over here, or you should at least, just to keep things clean. All right. And now here comes the magic. Okay. We're going to, and let's have this represented, and let's actually rotate this around so it's a little bit cleaner. Let's actually get all these out into place, right? Uh, let's rotate this one. Oops. And let's rotate this one. And you'll see, and this is just to keep things clean. Um, we're going to wire this sum up to here. We're going to wire this sum up to here. This carry out is going to feed into the carry in in this next one here, right? This final carry out is going to go here. Right now, technically, just to keep things uh, clean, we're gonna throw. We have to connect an input here just so it doesn't it doesn't error out. Right? We're actually not gonna worry about this one for, for the moment because uh, this is our singles place. We actually could have put a half adder in here just fine. Right? Um, okay, so here we are. All right. So again, this is these are the numbers we're adding together. Think of these as numbers, and this is our final result right here. Okay. Keep all that in mind. This is our final result. Okay, so let's just do one plus zero. Okay, that looks good. Let's do one plus one. Okay, remember one zero is how we represent two. That's cool, all right? Let's do two, good, plus one. Okay, that seems good, right? Let's do three plus one. Oh, interesting. We flowed all the way through and this rippled out and then remember one zero zero is how you represent four, okay? Uh, what about two plus two? Once again, that's four, okay? What about uh, three plus two? I'm sorry, um, uh, yeah, three plus two, one, zero, one, that's five. And now the whole thing, and this is gonna be six, right? And so we now have our full two-bit adder, right? Um, Think about what this is. This is three plus three, and we end up with six, right? So imagine this is one, 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 right? Three, three, um, and one, one, zero is how you represent six in binary world. So that's it. If you wanted to add more, right? You just, you just throw in another full adder, right? Let's grab two more numbers for our sort of our 
fours place, right? <clears throat> Let's do this. Let's do this. We're now going to take this, and the sum is going to connect to here. We're going to wire that together, and let's grab one more light bulb. We're going to rotate this around. The carry out comes here, right? And what we now have is a three bit adder, right? So what we could end up with here is all right, so now we have, right? So this is still six, right? What if we, uh, let's clear all this bit, right? Uh, so this is now going to be 4 plus 4 is 8, right? That's what we want, right? Um, what about 5 plus 4, right? 9, that's good, right? So now we have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, oh boy, what's this? This is uh, 110, that's 6, right, plus 5. And let's see if this is 11. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11. That's correct, right? This is so 1, 0, 1, 1 is how you represent 11 in binary. It works, right? This is exactly how your computer does math. I mean, well, not exactly. Uh, it's actually a bit more sophisticated than the triple, but this is essentially how your computer does addition, right? You give it a bunch of signals, it processes it correctly into addition. Uh, all other mathematical operations flow from there. So this is a lot to take in. This is a lot to sort of grapple with. Go through it. Uh, I encourage you. So Logically has a 30-day uh, free trial. I would do it. I would download it and play around with it if this interests you, right? Uh, and again, you know, this is this is weightlifting for coding, right? This is doing these types of exercises will make you ultimately much more comfortable dealing with ands, ors, nots, etc., and various combinations, various very complex combinations, right? And once you sort of have that conditional logic uh, down pat, um, a lot of coding options open up for you. So study this a little bit, um, play around with it. Um, I find this stuff to be really interesting. I hope you do too. Um, and then I would encourage you again, pause, replay until this kind of starts to make sense uh, to you. But really the thing that'll do it is playing with it yourself. So enjoy.